Welcome back, everyone. We will continue uh, studying about uh, spirit senses and how we perceive God's communication. Uh, before we get into our lesson, Divya had a question in uh, the chat section. She says, how to train ourselves in these? In other words, how does one identify when this happen happens? So, uh, Divya, it's part of the, the chapter here. We'll get into it. Uh, just give me uh, a maybe about five minutes, I'll touch upon the sense of taste, the sense of uh, smell, and then get into training of our senses. So we've uh, so far understood feelings, seeing, hearing, and uh, uh, right now we talk about the sense of taste. And uh, uh, yeah, if it's smell, touch, is another sense that we have not yet spoken about. So there are scriptures like, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How can we taste God? The meaning, the actual meaning of this is in the spirit we can. So uh, uh, then, you know, we might describe him as, oh, I, I sense a sweetness. Uh, as if our spirit has tasted God. So uh, our spirit is actually, uh, you know, it has that ability of taste. Uh, and, and that's why you have scriptures like that. Even uh, Ezekiel, he, he says, you know, uh, God told him that you spill your stomach with the scroll. Okay, so he eats the scroll and uh, he gives a response to it and he says it was uh, in my mouth like honey in sweetness so you see there he tasted the the scroll which god gave him to eat or he received the message of god and it was in this form so that is a spiritual experience now talking about touch right uh, or a smell remember smell we are the aroma of christ how can we be an aroma we, we, you know, are, uh, we are not particles in the air, but it's a spiritual sense that one can have where they can smell the fragrance, you know, of the presence of God or uh, the uh, child of God. So in this manner, one can perceive smell or touch uh, now jesus you recall Math, mark chapter 5 when the lady comes she touches jesus with the faith he says who touched me was he talking about physical touch not really because so many people must have been uh, uh, falling on him and touching him on this uh, in the crowd in the crowd you know on the street but he did not perceive that as touch he is specifically telling the lady who touched me because she approached jesus with faith and uh, this is how the spirit perceives communication from god so we have to be uh, ready to receive what God is saying. Now, coming to the question that uh, Divya asked, she said, oh, how can we train our senses? How can we use this, you know, to walk with the Lord and be a blessing to other people? So what we must recognize, Divya, first is we must recognize that all of us as believers, you know, we definitely, we have a spirit, right? That's how God has created us. So we are tripartite being, we have a spirit man. And we must recognize that all our spirits have these capabilities. So somewhere in our heads, we think, oh, uh, somebody who is, uh, you know, uh, uh, maybe in the fivefold ministry office, they can pick it up. I can't pick it up. But that's not true. Every believer can pick it up because we all have a spirit. All our spirits have the five senses uh, or even more than that. So first thing is, I must recognize I have been designed to hear from God. Now, if I convince myself that I can't hear, that's, you know, nobody can help. But it's a reality that all of us have been designed to hear from God. So that's the first thing. 
that we must settle in our minds the second thing that we must settle in our minds is that god communicates god speaks will god want to speak to me yes of course he would you know he speaks to uh, all his children and uh, i need to be ready with that attitude that okay fine you know god will speak to me uh, and i now that we know of the different channels through which he communicates we must be open so when i'm praying uh, i must do something like try to perceive through one of these ways you know am i feeling something am i seeing something is there a word which is being dropped in my spirit or am i seeing a word you know or a sentence or something uh, in my spirit uh, am i able to grasp that or can i taste can i sense so i have to have that initiative to think that okay god will say something so i am ready to receive it so have that kind of an attitude when we pray when we approach god so each time we do this divya where we know that yes i am capable of listening god speaks through all these channels and i am ready to receive you'll notice that you begin to hear more from god okay um, uh, and uh, you and as you hear from god it just becomes a whole lot easier to pick up the communication as you go forward um, so it, it's like uh, you know when somebody calls us on the phone for the first time we don't know their voice uh, that much but we speak to them but if that person is regularly calling us okay over a period of time what happens we pick up the call even if we don't know i mean if it's not a mobile phone and if it's like your regular telephone as well when you as the moment we pick it up we say hey uh, shanti hey john uh, because we are so familiar with the voice of that person so it's very similar when it comes to hearing god's voice the more we practice or the more we uh, you know receive his communication the easier it becomes to pick up more communication and that's what hebrews chapter 5 you know verse 13 and 14 it it says uh, it says something like uh, those who uh, are full uh, are of full age that is who by reason of use notice practice by reason of use have exercised their senses to discern both good and evil so a uh, believer who's growing in the lord one of the things that this growing believer needs to do is to exercise their senses and uh, that simply means put it, putting it into practice we are listening 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 hearing perceiving receiving the message of god so the more you Uh, tend to do it when the message of the lord comes then what happens uh we just know that hey this is god's voice you know it's not any other uh, you know it, because initially when somebody starts off listening uh, or perceiving uh, you know the the prophetic uh, message from god there can be doubts where we say maybe i'm making it up it's coming from within me or is it really from god so initially that is normal but now that we know in the bible see it's nothing uh, it's it's common for god to speak and especially when i pray and i say lord speak to me then god speaks and it's it's not my own voice that i'm hearing so in this manner i start to listen right and remember what we said earlier we said there is also a process in that uh, uh uh table we saw how the message comes and then i have to employ my soul my mind my will my emotions where i'm assessing okay this is what the word says uh, this is what the the spirit is saying is it in agreement with the word of god okay so all that is going on and that will help me so that is also part of the practice that is also part of exercising the senses so then my soul part will will uh give me an outcome 
and say actually yes you know this is good this is from the lord and uh, you can use it you can share this message so as often as i do this hear from god process it release it hear from god process what is happening what hebrews 5 verse 13 and 14 said exercise your senses and the more you exercise the better it gets the faster it gets you know the quicker it gets so that is the training process many times when we uh, hear preachers say train your spirit spirit man develop your spirit man so one part is also to train it in this way right first of all train it with the word so that you are able to then accurately receive a prophetic message okay and process it and then be able to release it so that's the way we would train our senses so it's a continuous learning process now uh, can mistakes happen uh yeah you know sometimes mistakes can happen in in our uh, perception of the uh, see the gift is pure i've already told us that but when it comes to the human vessel maybe in terms of our interpretation sometimes a mistake may happen but we learn from it so the next time uh, we prophesy we should be aware of maybe all the loopholes of the past and uh, try to get better at it at it improve ourselves and that's the way to you know become more and more accurate as far as uh, hearing the voice of god is concerned okay and a couple of things that can hinder it if we recall uh, the passage about uh, the sower okay the sower sowing the seed uh, and uh, some seed which falls on good ground bears much fruit but then the seed which falls on other places it's not able to to bear fruit because there are hindrances such as weeds stones dirt so uh, in our spiritual hearing there can be some hindrances like this you know weeds mark chapter 4 verse 19 it describes as uh, the cares of the world the deceitfulness of riches and the lust for other things so when we are distracted in other words you can just put it into the box of distraction there are many distractions for all of us when our mind is pulled in several directions we are not at peace even if god is speaking we are not able to perceive it so distractions uh, can be a hindrance uh, stones in mark chapter 4 verse 17 it is uh, described as afflictions and persecutions so you know sometimes when we are going through a low because of all the issues different things that are going on and discouragement and disappointment if we are not careful that can also affect our hearing from god okay so the bible warns us and it says that uh, don't let it hinder you uh, even going through persecutions difficulties for the lord don't let that be a hindrance to hearing the voice of god uh, dirt is uh, you know different things from the world uh, that we we that affects our mind and that's why the bible calls us to renew our minds so how do we how do we cleanse ourselves on a daily basis uh, from the influences of the world washing by the water that's how the lord jesus cleanses his bride his church isn't it so uh, we when we renew our minds even that will remove the filth that the uh, world puts on us and we can better hear god so these would be the uh, hindrances okay that that will stop us from hearing from god uh, and you know sometimes the challenge is that we put god in a box and we assume that he will speak in a certain way for example you know i pray for somebody and then i think that uh, okay you know god is going to speak uh, and he will give me a picture as i start praying if i don't get a picture i'm disappointed you see what's happening there i have an assumption that god always speaks like this but it may not be the case he may want to uh, you know speak to us through a certain spirit sense of feeling in that moment or you know in some other way uh, 
uh, we might think that God will only speak through uh, a certain person, but God can speak. You know, in in scripture, you find that the donkey spoke <laughs> and brought a message from God. So we have to be open to the communication of God, the method through which it comes, and the means or the person uh, through which it might come. So uh, if we are not open, even then there can be a hindrance because you know we are waiting on the Lord to speak in a certain way, and then He speaks in a completely. Different way. So in First Kings chapter nineteen, verses eleven and twelve, uh, you know God uh, uh, speaks to Elijah, and when He speaks to Elijah, uh, it says that you know Elijah was uh, listening to what God was saying, and the Lord was not in the wind. Uh, and after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. So finally, what did God use to speak to Elijah? The still small voice. So another thing that we usually say is, uh, we must be open to the supernatural uh, and not necessarily to the spectacular. Because what a lot of believers end up doing is we feel that if God is speaking, it should be, it should accompany lightning and thunder and action and drama. And, you know, that's when God has actually spoken to me. Uh, what if it doesn't? What if God just gives a, a word like Philip God, overtake the chariot? That's all. No? So it's more to do with our assumptions about how God is supposed to speak that gets us stuck. But when we are open all the time, you see, even a little child, we are praying about something. But that message can come through that little child, you know. So it can come anyway. So as a believer, I'm open all the time, all the time. Not just when I'm praying, but all the time. What is God saying? What is God saying through the circumstance? What is God saying through this conversation? You know, so then when you're in that state, you can pick up what God actually wants for us. So let me pause here. Any any comments before we go ahead? We will take some time to pray and hear from God. And then I will uh, go to chapter 10. Yes. Yes, Sivya? Yeah, thank you, Pastor. I was just uh, thinking about uh, when God speaks in those uh, small sentences, right? Just uh, it, it might not be spectacular, but just in small sentences. Uh, like if, if the person who hears it doesn't obey, we don't know because in the Bible, it never records a person who had disobeyed, uh, like uh, that voice of God. But uh, I mean to say the... Uh, major people uh, so in our lives like when god um, is, is it like we if we disobey or if we do not listen uh, then god doesn't speak or uh, is it like uh, as we obey him he speaks more is it like that so i just want to know how how god deals with that Okay. Uh, yes, Divya. It's uh, the way you said it is correct. That um, when we obey God, we will notice that we are hearing more. But when we are disobedient, we'll notice that you know the communication seems to be lesser. Because why would God want to give us a message if we are not going to use it, right? Uh, so, yes, there is that danger of um, gradually having reduced communication and no communication. A classic example would be Saul in the Old Testament who disobeyed God and he went away from the covering of God's protection. But uh, we are under the new covenant now. And so uh, as, you know, regular normal believers, for us, the advantage is that through the cross, we are also under grace. And so 
uh, when you look at uh, passages like Hebrews 7, 25, the Lord, he saves to the uttermost. That means that God's rope is very long. <laughs> His patience is very long, long suffering. Uh, so he will give us upteen chances and be gracious to us, uh, be ready to restore us, all that. But as the Bible says, right, Hebrews 6, Hebrews 10, that if we push it to the limit, Right. If a believer pushes it to the limit, if they fall away from the faith uh, and, you know, they they live a life of disobedience where they have treated the blood of Jesus uh, as having no value and, uh, you know, the, the cross, they have dishonored the cross, then yes, they, they will ultimately, you know, go to a, a place where they no longer uh, are able to perceive what God is saying. But uh, please know that this is a warning, yes, uh, but for a normal believer who's who's trying to have daily accounts with God and, you know, confess their sins and all, you don't, you don't really have to be worried uh, too much that, hey, will I go into that? That's a, that's a very rare occurrence, a very rare occurrence. Yeah. Yeah, got it, Pastor. So uh, I was just thinking of maybe sometimes uh, when God asks us to, you know, maybe go share the gospel with someone, it's like a yeah. prompting, right? I don't know whether it's an audible voice, but maybe a prompting uh, to go share the gospel. Or And if we do not do that, so I, I'm just uh, wanting to know, like, uh, as you said, yeah, I, I understood as you said, like uh, the frequency and uh, even the perception of when God speaks uh, to understand that even that can reduce. That's that true. That can reduce That's gradually. Yeah. Gradually, yeah. God yeah. will give us many chances. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, despite that, if we are continuing with disobedience, then yes, the frequency will come down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's like uh, that parable also, no, the, yeah, the talents. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you, we must, the yeah. gift, uh, the prophetic gift, is. it's like that. It's like a talent. When we steward it well, we put it to use, it becomes a blessing to people. Then it increases on its own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got it, got it. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, any, any other uh, thoughts? before we take some time to pray. Can I make a comment? Yes, please. Yes, brother. Yeah, thank, thank you, Pastor. I was just listening when you were yeah, talking about hearing from God and uh, discerning His voice. You say it's a matter of exercise. And I just want to say I like the illustration you gave about the telephone conversation at times, and that's very true. When somebody begins to talk to you for the first time, you cannot properly grasp his voice. But if over time the person continues to talk to him, to sorry to you, you can completely know and be able to. So this is Isaac speaking. I like that illustration. Thank you very much. Praise God. Yeah, happy to know. And thank you for sharing, uh, Brother Isaac. Uh, yeah, so that's how we build our familiarity and train our human spirit. Uh, so let's go ahead. We will take some time to pray for each other. And in the last class, when we did chapter 8, there I talked about the three simple steps that one can take in order to prophesy. And that is to pray, to perceive, and then prophesy. So what we will do is we will pray first, ask God, God, speak to me, speak to me about this person or speak to me about somebody or whatever. You just pray. And uh, after that, you know, the Lord, as he puts things in your heart uh, in answer to our prayer, uh, we have to pick it up. So what what would he communicate like everything that I shared just now? Maybe we feel something in our spirit man or we um, 
you know, see something or hear something. Uh, it could be any form of communication. And the third one is to prophesy. Prophesy is to share it, release it. Okay. So let's try and do this. Uh, this will be very helpful. Uh, and after that, when we do chapter 10, you probably will have more questions. All right. So let's do this. I would encourage us for the next one minute to just pray the spirit. Okay. Uh, oh, just a moment. Uh, success has a question. Yes, brother. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, good morning. Sorry, it's not, actually, it's not actually a question. I want to okay. ask, is there any in our... Um, in our course that you can with students and lecturer can have time to pray together for maybe like a 30 minutes or 20 minutes as case may be uh, we we do have like personally if some students uh, request for a time like that um, then there is a possibility okay so i would um, I mean, just if you can email me or request, uh, let me know, and then I, I can see what could be done. Is that OK? It's, it's OK. Thank you. I will yeah, email yeah, you. Yes. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Wonderful. Yes. All right, uh, then. Let's, let's uh, I was saying, let's take a minute to pray in the spirit, and then we will come back. And uh, I'll pray a prayer, and then we will you know, perceive and of a site. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that, Lord, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are for today. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are for every believer. Thank you, Lord, that, uh, Lord, you speak to us, Father God, uh, through the, the gift of prophecy. And Father, at this time, we pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord, you will put a word, Lord, in each of our hearts, Father. Yes, Lord, each of our hearts, Father God, Lord, speak to us father speak to us lord speak to us for ourselves speak to us for each other speak to us lord for the people in our lives father god and lord cause us father god to be a blessing in jesus name we pray amen amen so class i want to encourage you we are going to take a, maybe 30 seconds 40 seconds to just perceive so we will all be quiet silent you pick up what the Lord is putting in your spirit.
Okay. So those of us who have a word, no pressure. If you feel like, oh, I didn't get anything, then uh, you don't have to try and make it up. Uh, but if there are people you feel like, hey, I think I have something, you can either post it in the chat or unmute and begin to share it. Yes, Sivya, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, Pastor, it was just like uh, uh, worship kind of came to me, like an amazing God. This was the term. And I was reminded of the song Indescribable by Chris Tomlin. Uh, and I'm not sure whether uh, like uh, finger of God, um, something like that. Uh, yeah, I don't know the connection. Yeah, but maybe yeah okay. I, I i was feeling this presence like uh, very strongly in the fingers so that's why i said finger of god i didn't hear anything on that but uh yeah but the song was uh indescribable uh, by chris tomlin yeah Okay, so when you uh, when you're saying that uh, you had this uh, amazing God and uh, amazing love and indescribable, how did you how did you perceive it? How did you get it? Like, did you see those words? No, I started actually. Uh, uh, it, I was reminded of this song, "Amazing God" was a term, and I was uh, instantly reminded of. Uh, the song by Chris Tomlin, it goes like in, indescribable, uh, uncontainable. Um, I can put the lyrics over here. Um, yeah, so it uh, and the and strong sense of God's presence uh, in my fingers. So I, uh, I'm not sure what is the connection, but uh, yeah, these three things were uh, coming. Okay, so uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, you've shared the different parts of what you perceived, so that is good. Uh, now we could, if someone has an interpretation for what Divya has perceived, you may share that. But I will move on to what Jeffina has posted here in the chat. She says. Uh, um, I saw Psalm 119 in verse 3, which says, uh, you, you want to go ahead and say this, Jafina? That'll be better. OK. Yeah. Uh, so uh, as I started praying, uh, I just saw Psalm 119. And I felt like there is something over this that God wants to share through this chapter. And I also was clearly sensed that it's uh, verse 3. So then I saw it's the verse was again. And before that, even before this whole thing, I saw the hand of God pulling some hands towards his face. Uh, I was just uh, remember how uh, the angel of God pulled uh, Lot when he was in Jesus. And uh, even when he uh, was given an instruction to go out, there is a verse that says they, they, the angels literally pulled him towards the way. Uh, so I was just reminded of it. And then I saw this verse and it says that uh, they do not compromise with evil and they walk only in respect. So I just felt like uh, this bad should be some, uh, this, uh, this bad should be a batch where we don't compromise on things, but we keep holding on to him and keep walking with him. And God is always there to pull us uh, to this place. That's what. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jeffina. Uh, so, Jeffina, when you say that I saw uh, Psalm 119 and verse 3, uh, how did you perceive it? Just want to understand. Uh, so, as I told, uh, I, I just started praying in the uh, So, the very first thing that came to my mind was the Psalm chapter 11. Uh, and then uh, you know it's it's kind of a very long song. I can't say the whole song here. So I know it's the biggest chapter in the Bible. I'm like, okay, 
Okay. Uh, so, and then I just kept uh, pushing forward. Uh, so then I didn't see verse three. I saw this image of God uh, who's pulling us. So I was just wondering what it might be. And I think I just kept asking God through the process, like what he wants to say, what. So that's all that I did, I think. He just connected the dots. Uh, so, and then I saw uh, number three. Uh, I was able to see number three. I think Psalm chapter 119, I felt it on my mind, but I saw the number three. So uh, it was like that. So then I, when I uh, saw the verse, I was able to connect it with the image. And God just led me to pray for everyone here. And he's really a God who speaks. Okay. Yes, thank you, Jatina. So, you, uh, so again, you know, a nice thing is coming through in what you're sharing. So, we can't compartmentalize. You felt Psalm 119, you saw three, and then, uh, you know, you kind of uh, then later had this connection with the image of, you know, God pulling and all that. So, uh, but you got the message, right? So, in different ways, the message actually came to you so that's nice uh, and thank you divya and Jeffina for sharing if uh, there's uh, anyone who has a word you may please share otherwise we're going to pray again okay and then we'll perceive again all right so uh there were two things that I perceived. I just felt like uh, there is revelation. In Like there was a dark place. But through the word of God, there is now revelation regarding certain matters. And uh, that is one thing I saw. And I felt like uh, somebody is praying for wisdom. And God is giving them uh, wisdom to simplify. Okay, wisdom to simplify uh, some situation. So if anyone relates to that, you could please post it in the chat and let me know. Uh, what we will do now is we will pray for one person. So is there any volunteer who needs prayer? You please say that, hey, you know, pray for me. And then we'll all pray for you. And we'll see what the Lord may speak uh, for you. Yes, pray for me. Okay, <laughs> that's great, Brother Paul. Uh, he spoke first, so we are all going to pray for uh, Brother Paul right now. Uh, let's do that. Okay, I will. I will mute myself. Take a couple of moments to just pray, and if you have a word for him, let's go ahead and share it. And uh, Brother Paul, what you can do is once everyone has shared you can tell us you know what was relevant what was applicable if something was not applicable that's also, that's also fine okay so that's what we're going to do okay sure let's All right, uh, class. So if you have a word for uh, Paul here, please go ahead, share it. I just sense uh, this part when Ananias was praying over Saul, this word that God spoke to Ananias to tell Saul, 
saying you are a chosen vessel um, so this um, suddenly sends that scenario in my mind that uh, one person is going and praying for soul and uh, reveals this verse so i'll just quickly turn this this is in acts chapter 9 verse 15 uh, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before gentiles kings and the children of israel so uh, this uh, this word chosen vessel um, to to encourage as a word of encouragement thank you thank you thank you john yes 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 uh, success please go ahead um praise god mr paul you have been chosen to yes worship, you have been chosen to worship god for a while in testif worship because i saw very clear you are you put something in your mouth and to worship god was a little bit difficult but the moment you put something in your mouth your mouth were opened and the nations we are running towards you in tears by the means of lifting their hands to heaven take time to worship god you will see the heart pouring of god very clear thank you thank you thank you uh, success thank you for that word for paul anyone else anything else that you saw so uh brother paul i uh, just got the sense of uh, bones um uh, some issue with the bones that hinder the walking uh, that the lord is healing that and i also got this uh, word in my spirit saying daughter so i don't know if you or someone you know is concerned about their daughter praying for their daughter for a certain matter but uh, that that also came to me uh, so now we let paul speak do let us know if uh, the words that you heard does it relate to you does it make sense to you please please share with us hey thank you pastor maybe you repeat yours the rest i got but yours i did not get well maybe first repeat again yeah sure so i was saying that i had a sense of uh, uh, bones okay bones and actually more specifically joints uh, as if there's prayer happening for somebody who uh, is unable to walk because of because of some issues with the bones joints uh, so like the lord is healing them that's what i felt and i also felt the word daughter so whether you or someone else you know is praying for their daughter and i was reminded of that those were the two things okay thank you i get you now uh, starting with the first one uh, where john paul said he got the words from acts chapter 9 verse 15 yes i've been having that calling there have been called god spoke to me to be an evangelist so it makes that one also relevant and then also what success talk about worshiping god and the nations were crying yes it still relates to that international calling <clears throat> god has ever spoken to me to to, to do that so as he say i should worship god says i will continue worshiping god for that to come to pass and then pastor what you talk about the bones and the joints i don't know very much but there is a woman who i know who is in our church she is on a wheelchair she was our family friend all the time when i look at her i feel a burden i feel a burden i, I feel like if god one day could even touch me i go and touch those bones and then she begin walking it would be good <clears throat> that is that, that is what has ever been in my in my in my mind then about the daughter we have one choir member she has marriage issues she got married to a muslim 
and she's almost got stuck there. The, she's in the body, she's a Christian, and the, the Muslim man is unfaithful, and now the family was trying now to see the way of rescuing her. And what I did, I offered a hand to help them. They come from another district to come and see how they can help this daughter of theirs. She has also financial issues, so I offered financial help to this Saturday, they will come and meet the daughter, meet the church, meet the, the husband to see how they can help her. So those are the few things that are relevant to the message. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, uh, Brother Paul, for sharing. Really blessed to know that uh, these words connected to you. Uh, we'll just take a, a moment to thank the Lord. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you that you speak to us. We thank you that you know us, oh God, uh, through and through. And for each word, Lord, that uh, uh, has been spoken over Paul this morning, Father, we believe that it has come with its power, God. And Lord, in each of those circumstances, situations, Lord, we release the mighty presence of God, the mighty power of God. And Lord, we ask for a turnaround, oh God. We ask for your anointing to make manifest, Father God, open doors and healing and deliverance, oh God. And Father, let your name be glorified, Father God. And Lord, we pray your strength and comfort, Lord, upon uh, Paul and his family, Father. Thank you, Lord, for each one who brought the word as well. We give you the glory and the honor, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So, you know, we just want to continue to praise and uh, thank God for the words that we have received today. I know uh, uh, we wish we could we could all be in person and maybe have half a day to do this because it's just so wonderful to hear from the Lord and to bless uh, each other. I, I see Brother Abu Abeka is also requesting. I want you to pray for me. So there are only two minutes because he's requested. Let's let's quickly pray and if there's a word uh, let's share and we'll close the class with that today we'll go into interpretation of prophecy in the next class okay uh, and also one quick note trances i think we've listed out enough trances so i'm just leaving it at that because i told you all that i'll share more but i think we've already listed uh, enough so let's uh, pray for abu baker and uh, please share if you have a word for him Yes, yes. So please feel free. You can post, uh, type it on the chat or unmute and share. So uh, uh, Abu uh, Baker, I feel like uh, uh, the sense I had is season of preparation. Okay, so season of preparation. Okay. Anything else? I was uh, uh, reminded of Nathaniel. John chapter uh -huh. one, where uh, Jesus tells him that there is, uh, when he was under the fig tree, I saw you. Uh, this is the man in Israel, and him, there is no guile. Yeah, that was a portion that I was reminded of. I'm not sure if it's relevant. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, this is what I was reminded. Yes, thank you, thank you, Davia. Uh, anyone else? Uh, so I was just praying for him, and, and I saw uh, a lamp, um, half a light, and I saw uh, Nehemiah chapter 13, verse uh, 9. So basically what happens here is uh, uh, everything is being restored. Uh, so the house of God is being restored over there. So I just felt like uh, he, he's going to be a light uh, where he will cleanse. Uh, where whatever he's deciding towards, I, I don't know much about him. But whatever he's deciding towards, uh, he's gonna be a reformer. 
is going to be a light that makes things or uh, make people feel that these are things you should not do. She will be someone who will add things to the house of God, who will shine much more brighter for him. Uh, this verse is Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 9. So, uh, Abu Bek, I hope uh, that you are able to relate to it and that it's a blessing to you. Uh, I, you may share maybe uh, in the next class, if that's okay with you. We'll wrap up for now. Uh, and I want to request uh, one of us here to please pray and we close after that. Thank you so much, ma'am. That system yeah. of preparation yeah. is very, very correct. Praise God. System Praise of God. preparation. Praise God. For, for great things and and i know so this is a confirmation that god is in, is in it so thank you so much i really appreciate you thank you javina i can't hear you hear clearly javina maybe you can help me to put it on the sharp notes so i can't hear you clearly so if you can help me to to put it on the sharp notes so i'll be able to read it there so thank you so much yeah, thank you for the confirmation, uh, Abu Bekka. Uh, so we'll pray and close now. Uh, could somebody lead in prayer? Let's pray. Father Almighty, King of Glory, we thank you for this session. We thank you for the words of revelation. We thank you for your shown your mighty hand upon us. You have shown us our destiny. You showed us a plan that you have for us. Father, we now thank you that let them come into fulfillment. We pray that you continue using this, this class to reveal to us our destiny. We pray and declare all this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you, uh, Brother Paul. And one uh, last uh, request, if uh, you can use the stream page on Google Classroom uh, and uh, post words for each other, even that will be amazing. You know, that's a way that you can practice and others can give a confirmation uh, of that word. So please feel free. You can use the stream page and uh, leave uh, words of prophecy for each other. So uh, we uh, close today. Uh, we'll come back again next week and continue uh, in the prophetic ministry. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Be a blessing to others. See you. Bye for now. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.